Greetings, friends, and welcome to our video service for the second Sunday after Pentecost, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of, of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told him how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of Jerusalem asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When I have thought about this passage in years past, I reflected on the power of names. It is profoundly sad for instance, to hear this young man respond to Jesus' question, what is your name, by answering legion. He has defined himself, it would seem, by his deficits, by his ailment, by his pain, by his struggles, and his captivity. We can contrast this shrunken, broken reality with the life-restoring gift of a new name, a new identity in holy baptism. I'm still struck by this reality, but lately I was taken not so much by what Jesus said to this captive young man, but where Jesus went to find him. First, he leaves the comfortable, predominantly Jewish area of Galilee, and he crosses the sea to the land of Jerusalem. This is Gentile territory, not a place where a Jewish rabbi would normally venture. Once on land, he is encountered. Some might say he is accosted by a man possessed with an unclean spirit. That's an interesting designation, which reminds us that there are a variety of spirits in the world some life-giving, and some not. This one is not. And in Jewish custom, it is therefore, he is not only perilous to himself and others, but he is religiously unclean. And moreover, this young man no longer abides among the living in the local town, but rather dwells among the dead 
in the tombs we should know. Are another place considered ritually unclean? All of which means that Jesus, this itinerant Jewish rabbi proclaiming the coming kingdom of God, goes to an unclean place to meet a man possessed by an unclean spirit, living in an unclean place. And this, in short, is the very last place that Jesus should be. Which, when you think about it, is where God usually shows up at our moments of profound doubt, or grief, or loss, or defeat. And this is the one that often surprises us among those who may to this point have little interest in, let alone relationship with God. Note that after this encounter, Jesus sails back home again, which may mean that the whole trek across the stormy sea and the turbulent run-in with the townspeople who are distraught by their loss of livestock and frightened by the power of this rabbi was all in order to meet this unclean man possessed by an unclean spirit living in an unclean and forsaken environment. All of which suggests, I think, that there is absolutely nowhere that God is not willing to go to reach and to free and to sustain and to heal those who are broken, those who are despairing. So we should remember this week that there is no place on earth that is God forsaken. And moreover, and perhaps more importantly, there is no person that is God forsaken. The unclean, the outcast, the abandoned, the unpopular, the incarcerated, the unbeliever, no one is left out. Think about it. There's no indication that this Gentile man later became Jewish or, for that matter, Christian. He wants to follow Jesus, but Jesus sends him back home with the instructions, go and tell what God has done for you. Or to put it another way, there are no conditions to be met to receive God's love. You don't have to be wealthy or poor. You don't have to be from one ethnic group or another. You don't have to have believed your whole life or come to faith only recently or have any faith at all. Jesus seeks out everyone, even this unclean man possessed by an unclean spirit living in an unclean place. And just so God loves all people male and female, young and old, gay or straight, white, black, Asian, Latino, believers and non-believers, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim, atheist, and the list goes on. Which might make us ask, where are we willing to go? Whom are we willing to love? In the wake of our frequent violent crimes of hate and terror, we need, I think, first to be reminded that God is always among those in greatest need and pain. And secondly, that we are sent out to go and do likewise. This week, that means that God was particularly present in our towns and cities that have experienced this terrible gun violence. And so should we, whether physically present or by means of prayer. This is not often easy work, of course, but we take it up and go out knowing that God is with us, working through us to seek out those in need, to share a word of mercy 
and grace and to witness to the hope that we have in Jesus, the one who continues to seek us out when we feel down and out, when we feel caught in the shadowlands, eager for a new name and identity and future. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.